boom, this is Point of View, and we're back. This is another episode of our TikTok response where we're adding thought to thick. <laughs> you say it. <laughs> Tick. We're adding thought to thick thought. Thought to TikTok. <laughs> Should we just start again? No. This is this is comedy gold here. People will love this. Um, this is the show where we're unashamed. <laughs> We're unashamed to look at political no, I'm issues ashamed. from a biblical point of view. I'm pretty ashamed we are, at this point. We're a little bit ashamed of how how I can't say thought and TikTok um, in the same sentence. It's okay. Um, You've only been doing intros for like, I don't know, a year and a half now. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Anyway, so we've been talking about this uh, TikTok uh, thread, stream. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you call them on TikTok. But anyway. It's by Miley Bankston who asked the question, tell me something that's not in the Bible, but th people think that it is. And we, we dealt with all kinds of questions, questions about, oh, you know, abortion isn't in the Bible, just leave women alone. And uh, uh, white people aren't in the Bible, which they are, the Romans, they killed Jesus. And then, uh, you know, all kinds of other different, uh, different claims about what's not in the Bible. Last, our last one was on the subject of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John not actually being in the Bible or not actually writing the Bible, um, the, the, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so check all those out. It's a whole series. We still have five more videos out of our cho chosen videos to, to respond to that we haven't gotten to. But I think these will be rather quick. So let's see how it goes. We're going to start with the... Uh, Oh, Justin has something to update us from the last episode when he made a false claim. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead, Justin. <laughs> no, actually, I made a claim that was it was correct, but it wasn't it wasn't exactly how I worded it. So I said that Eliezer, Abraham's servant that he sends out to get a bride for Isaac, means comforter. Technically not true, what, but it is a parallel. His name is still a parallel with the Holy Spirit. Eliezer means uh, God is my help. Now, the reason I say that's a parallel with the Holy Spirit still is because the Holy Spirit is called the Parakletos, which is a helper, a helper also called a comforter. I, I picked the wrong meaning of Parakletos to, to say it parallels. It does parallel it because the Holy Spirit is sent by God as a help, whereas Eliezer means God is my help. So very clearly still a parallel of the Holy Spirit in his name itself. I just had the details a little bit off. I wanted to clear that up because I can't stand the idea that I might have said something that somebody went out and believed and didn't fact check me on. I want to do that myself. So that's the information. Feel free to look that up yourself. And I'm glad he, he checked that because I was like, oh, my goodness, I've never heard this before. And um, I was going to probably end up repeating it myself if, if you hadn't uh, if you hadn't uh, clarified that justice. So thank you for doing that. We, we are we honestly here at point of view. We really do want to be right. I mean, we want to be factual and correct. We're not we're not about trying to prove that we are right. We're about trying to find the truth and then convey that to you. So we're, we're not here to try to, you know, ride some sort of hobby horse, whatever. Um, and I, I hope that's clear in everything that we do. Um, you you guys have have made comments on our videos before that we've come we've come and and clarified things right here on the show. We want to we that, that's the goal here. We're not we're not out to try to give out false information, although YouTube thinks that we are. Uh, they've taken down a couple of our videos. Now they don't uh, think we're out to give out reasons. false information. They they think we're just out to give out the wrong narrative about uh, Joe's cookies. But th that's another episode. Cookies. That's yeah. inside. You guys have to watch all the shows if you want to know what, the, what that's talking about. Anyway, let's let's do this guy. This guy says Lucifer and Satan are not in the Bible. Let's see what he had to say. Latin adjective for light bringer. The same year. That Sorry, uh, started right there in the middle of the clip. Let's 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 start at the beginning. Tell me something that is not in the Bible. But people think it is. That people think that Lucifer means Satan? Y'all weren't ready for my last video, so let's dig deeper. The word Lucifer is mentioned in the English translations one time, which is Isaiah 14, 12. But in the Hebrew Bible, the original version, you can see where it says, Day star, son of the morning. Now this is where it gets interesting. Copy and paste the Hebrew, then paste it into translate, you get Hillel ben Shakar. That's why I believe going directly to the source. Now this translation doesn't equate to Satan, fallen angel, nothing. Hillel means greatly praised. Ben has always meant sun. And Shikar is dawn or morning. Son of the morning. Now meet St. Jerome or Eronymus, the man responsible for translating the Greek Septuagint into the Roman Catholic Latin Vulgate. Lucifer, the Latin adjective for light bringer. The same year that he was doing this, he was trying to get bishop over his opponent. Guess who that might be? 
meet Saint Lucifer, the political opponent or adversary of Jerome. So why did they lie to us? Okay, interesting. I, um, I think that he's actually more correct than most of you might think. Um, but uh, I wanted to say this real quick before we dive in. This guy, his name is on TikTok. You can look him up. He's Widows Mijo, W I D O W S M I J O 2. Widows Mijo 2, I guess. And he actually, his name is listed as William Tyndale, which is interesting. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, underneath that, it says Master Mason, Freemason, Masonry isn't evil. So, um, Interesting, interesting uh, character. Um, I'd love to um, find out what all those tattoos mean as well. Those look a little bit interesting. But anyway, um, so Justin, his claim is that Lucifer isn't actually in the Bible. And to be honest, I agree. The, the, the word Lucifer is the Latin word that means morning star. The phrase in the book um, of, was it, was it Isaiah or was it Ezekiel? I believe it's Ezekiel. Lucifer's talked about in both. Or excuse me, uh, Isaiah 14, 12. I think is where it it's, is. yeah. The Isaiah name 14, Lucifer is only used in Isaiah, though he's also referenced in Ezekiel. So in Isaiah, it, the, the name, it's actually not a name. It's saying there's this morning star or this bright one of the morning. That's what the word, what the Hebrew words actually mean, bright one of the morning. Um, and so that was translated into Eng into latin as lucifer because Lu the word the word lucifer means morning star and then when it was translated into english everyone knew the morning star as l its latin name lucifer and so they just kept the the, the latin name because it was a proper name as lucifer because that's what the people knew it as but the it wasn't actually meant as a name it was meant as a description of the fact that he was very bright like the bright morning star yeah um First of all, this is another one I have to add to the pile of ways I've heard Septuagint pronounced. Um, I've heard it <laughs> Septuagint. Septuagint, Septuagint. I've heard, what did he say? I think he says Septuagint. Yeah, Sep Septuagint or something like that. It's, it, I've always heard of Septuagint, except for one professor calls it the Septuagint. I don't know. Anyway, what the Sep Shikar Septuagint is dawn, I morning, know. son of the morning. Now meet St. Jerome or Eronymus, the man responsible for translating the Greek Septuagint into the Roman. Septuagint. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, so whatever. Um, I, if you don't know what the Septuagint is, it's the or the, the Greek translation of the, the Hebrew Old Testament. Granted, there's a lot of complication behind that. It's not like one group of people did it or anything like that, but... In other, but what he's the point he's making is actually correct here, and I, I think it's important to understand that there are some things that we do in our English Bibles that are taken from the Septuagint. Um, though he's saying this is Jerome's Latin, but like for example, if you see in the Old Testament, if your Bible says, um, "I am the Lord your God," and Lord is capital L O R D, that Lord is not the word there. The word there is Yahweh. That's the name of God. However, the People who did the Septuagint used kurios, which means Lord, instead of writing the divine name. And that tradition has sort of kept going. So in other words, when we translate, I am the Lord, your God, and it's all caps, we're doing a Septuagintism in, in some sense and keeping that tradition going because there was a lot of um, beliefs about writing the divine name, things like that. So... He's right. There are some things about... Now, I don't think it really means much when it comes to... It doesn't do anything to disprove the Bible, but it is a, an important piece of information to know what God's name is that he gives is actually Yahweh, not Lord. Yeah, so to be clear for anyone who's not following, um, the the Old Testament of the Bible was written primarily in Hebrew with a few exceptions, a few few passages that, that weren't written in Hebrew. And um, mm -hmm. the the early New Testament church in, in the first century would have been using the Greek translation of that Bible into Greek, which would have been, which was called the Greek Septuagint, Septuagint, or eh, however you want to pronounce it, whatever. Um, yeah. and, <laughs> and then, so what, 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 when Justin's talking about our Bible coming mostly from Hebrew, yes, most of our translation comes from the Hebrew, but there are some things from the Greek Septuagint 
that are also translated into our Bible, um, rather just straight from the Hebrew. And, um, and one of those things is the name Lucifer. The name actually means the, what was written in Hebrew, which is the bright one of the morning. And it's just talking about him being some sort of a bright being, um, a really bright, shining star, an, an angel. He was a very bright angel before he fell. And if, if you want to know, you, you might think, okay, so who cares? Um, I, I can understand that to some extent, but understanding how the translations work does sometimes have an impact on how you view certain things. So, for example, when you understand that the word baptize is not a translation, it's just a transliteration, baptize comes from the word baptizo. It's just a Greek word, baptizo. And we, you, we, just, we didn't translate it, which would be to give its meaning in our our language, we transliterated it. We just made it an English word instead. Baptize meant to immerse. That, that was its common usage was to immerse, which would affect how you understand what baptism is if you understand, oh, baptize isn't this thing. It just was a word that meant to immerse. So now we have different modes of baptism. We say you can be baptized by sprinkling which literally means you can be immersed by not being immersed. <laughs> now, there were sense. some exceptions with how that word was used, primarily external to Scripture, that you could say included sprinkling, but in Scripture itself, it's clearly immersion. But the right. reason I say that is because understanding how translation works can affect how you view these kind of things. And when it comes to names in the Bible, um, things like Lord God gives his name to separate himself from the pagan gods. He doesn't say, I'm the actual God, not those guys. He says, I am Yahweh, your God. That's me. That's the name you you swear loyalty, not to Molech, not to Baal, not to all these guys. So I think there is some meaning to it, to understand that God was identifying himself for the people as the self-existent one. Um, but... I don't want to take up the whole episode. Yeah, we're chasing a little bit of a rabbit there. Um, Justin, did you know yeah. about the the Saint Lucifer, who is a political opponent of um, of Jerome? No, Jerome isn't one I've spent too much time. I mean, I know. Yeah, I was I was unaware Latin, of that. We're, we're gonna I'm gonna grant him that just because I'm not aware of the of the evidence. He seems to to support it and. I, you know, I, I suppose that might be true. That's an interesting thing I'll have to look into. But as far as the, the biblical side of it, he is right that the name Lucifer wasn't originally in the Bible. It was just a description of how bright and shining this creature was. And then it was the name Lucifer was given to him as a Latin trans, translation of that. Um, let's move on to the next one. This one is from a guy named Blake. And he says... Actually, I think I'm going to agree with this. He says that only God can judge me is not in the Bible. Tell me something that is not in the Bible, but people think it is. Oh, I got a good one. Only God can judge me. Yeah, we love to say that when people point out the sin and flaws in our life and we don't like it and we yell that back to them. But in fact, that's Tupac, not God. The Bible says to get the speck out of our eye first before we get the plank out of our brother's eye, we can see more clearly. It isn't saying that we can't make a judgment. The Bible says make a righteous judgment. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. And how do we know if there's bad company? We have to judge the character and the fruit that they bear. The Bible says, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. How do we know who the wicked is? Because we have to make a judgment of the fruit they bear and the character that they portray and the deeds that they do. So, yes, everybody wants to say, who he who sinned cast the first stone and all that. Yes, we should get the sin out of our life before we point it out in someone else's. But that is not saying that we cannot make a judgment. We don't judge their heart. Love the production there. That's pretty cool. His name is Blake. Um, he is... Uh his TikTok uh, handle is Blake Speaks Fire, speaks with a Z. And uh, he says he's a sinner saved by grace, a poet, and he has Isaiah 61 1, hashtag overcomer. <laughs> I like this guy. You know, it's, it's true. The Bible doesn't tell us that, that we can't judge. As a matter of fact, it, it actually tells us in the passage where it says judge not, it's actually telling us to judge. It's just telling us how not to judge, but to judge a different way. Right. Um, first of all, I have to say, I think there's a beautiful diversity in the different cultures that God has used for the gospel. Because, I mean, you look at me, clearly I'm not 
it, I'm not in the same type of culture as this man, but this man's preaching the same truth of Jesus. I, I think that's a beautiful thing, the diversity of God's people. I, I think yeah. that's really cool. Um, secondly, he's absolutely right. The Bible does tell us constantly to be discerning. What does that mean? To judge between things, um, to discriminate in some sense, not, not in a sort of evil kind of way, but to make a, a discernment between things and judge them. The Bible says, look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5. He says, this man has his father's wife. Kick him out of the church. He's not a believer, guys. Or at least you ought to treat him like he's not a believer. What was Paul doing? Judging him. I mean, yes, he, Jesus says, judge not lest you be not judged because the judgment you're meeting out will be returned to you. But what he does say is get the, the plank out of your eye so that you can help your brother get the speck out of his. Yeah. That, you know, it's so that you can judge. I preached on this uh, on Matthew 7 just recently. And you can you can go into where Bible Baptist Church online, which where we where uh, my church is. and You can watch the sermon. Uh, yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> we are unashamed to plug no, our church. No, no one's going to know how to spell where unless you spell it for yeah, them. Yeah, W-E-A-R-E. There you go. <laughs> and you find that on YouTube. Anyway, so it's interesting, though, when, when Jesus says, first of all, the judging means to make a judgment. That means you are making a decision about something being right or wrong. So when someone tells you, don't judge. They are literally making a judgment about whether your judgment is right or wrong. They are judging <laughs> your judgment. So you, you can't not make judgments. You have to make judgments. It's part of life. What Jesus is saying in, in Matthew 7 is not don't judge, because if you don't judge ever, you'll never be judged. No, he's saying don't judge for the purpose of not being judged. Uh, not being judged. So don't go out judging others, thinking that that's going to make you look better, and you'll never be judged yourself. No, you you do judge, but you start by judging yourself. He goes on to actually say, therefore, whatsoever you would have men do to you, do you so unto them. So he talks about yeah, take that take that beam out of your eye, and then you can see clearly to actually help your brother. Instead of trying to tear him down, you're actually now doing to him what you wish somebody had done to you because you had a giant beam, and somebody could have helped you. But, and you know, now that you've been helped, you can now help others with those problems. So we judge, but we judge for the right reasons. We judge in the right way. We don't cast our pearls before swine. Jesus said that in the same context. We don't just go out and say, hey, everybody's wrong and I'm right. No, we're, we're trying to help people. We're judging in a way that's trying to be helpful. Right. And notice the difference there between how people generally view judgment of, well, that person's just a wicked sinner. They're going to hell and just walk on down the road. No, 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 no. Help him get the speck out of his eye. I mean, there, there's a particularity to the approach here of I am doing this as a help to my brother rather than I'm doing this as the Pharisees as someone who is just trying to demonstrate their superiority. Because, yeah. yes, you you wanting to demonstrate superiority by judging, yes, that's that's not biblically okay. And, you know, it's interesting, Justin, the very next thing that Jesus said after the, uh, the little part about judging, you know what he said? Beware of false prophets. By their fruits, you shall know them. <laughs> he literally told them to judge. Exactly. Here, here's, here's a slight aside. People who say you should not judge people um, and judge whether or not they're a Christian based on their, their works and all that sort of stuff have no idea what Jesus said on this. Because yeah. he literally says, by their fruit, you will know them. In other words, I should be able to, actually, I'm commanded from Jesus to, to look at their fruit and say, okay, if that's the fruit, what is the tree that produces that fruit? If this person is demonstrated the fruit of the flesh that Paul lays out in, in Galatians, if, if that's what is the mark of their life, or as John would say, they're habitually living in hatred of their brother, not walking in God's commands, what tree produces that fruit? Well, it's not the, the Christian tree, so to speak, so I can know them by their fruit. Same thing for Christians. I can know them by their fruit. So it, it's all throughout scripture. And like you said, you can't live life without making judgment. You clicking on this video was a judgment. Now you might say, yeah, it was a bad one. <laughs> that was a bad but it was judgment. a judgment. <laughs> right. We're but so you, sorry. <laughs> you, you saying, okay, should I eat food or should I not eat food? That's a judgment. 
<laughs> so saying you can't judge is just untenable. It's you can't sustain it. It's almost like context kind of matters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Here's one more from Blake that was sent to us by our our um our show's resident um uh biblical biblical illiterist, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Juan, he's he's the guy who wants to learn more. He's he's our producer, and he's he he represents on the show the 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 person in the audience who's just like I don't know. I need the answers. And this is another one from Blake that he sent to us. Stop telling people their loved ones are in hell because they committed suicide. That is not in the Bible. See, the Bible says that God is near to the brokenhearted. You never know what somebody was going through. And yes, it's wrong and you should not kill yourself. But stop. the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the rejection of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you a story about King Saul. King Saul killed himself on his own sword. And the prophet Samuel told him the next day he would be with his sons in heaven. So yeah, he went to heaven and he fell on his own sword on purpose purpose you see you don't know what people are dealing with in their life and you're hurting their family members telling them that their 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 kids or their friends or whoever are in hell because they decided to commit suicide we should try to save these people as much as we can from doing that but don't go around telling people that they're in hell because they did it that is not in the bible okay so i'm not as sure that i'm that i agree entirely with blake on this one though i think still think blake's a great guy I do think his point is correct, though. I do think the idea that the sin of suicide will send you to hell is silly. You're either saved or you're not. People who who are believing Christians are believing Christians, and and if they've trusted Christ as their savior. However, believing Christians should act like it, and it does seem to prove that they don't believe in Christ if they're going to kill themselves, because that's clearly not what Christ wants them to do with their lives. But it's it it. The, the act of killing yourself doesn't send you to hell. It's just one more sin for which Jesus died. The question is, were you were you a genuinely be, genuine believing Christian? Believing genuinely means that you're willing to follow Christ. And if you're willing to follow Christ and you're going to kill yourself, it makes me think maybe you weren't really a believing Christian. Yeah, so I want to at least commend the guy on this. I think he's put more study into this than most people who— Yeah. Because it—, it, it even if I disagree with him, I can at least recognize he's not doing the surface level stuff a lot of people do on this one. So I want to I want to speak it's, to him on a. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, just something that came to my mind. But go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I just want to speak to him on a a sort of brother to brother level here, rather than you know, okay, you're just you haven't paid attention. This to me is the same question as what we were talking about with the trees and the fruit. Do I know for sure a person wasn't saved if they commit suicide? I don't think that that's something I would feel confident to say. However, what is suicide? It is the murder of an innocent person. Well, innocent to, to some extent. Not innocent before God and the final judgment, but, you know, someone who has not committed a crime worthy of death. It is the murder of a person. Murder, what do, what do we say murder is? Is that the fruit of the spirit or is that the fruit of the flesh? Very clearly, murder is the fruit of the flesh. So if I were to see a suicide, just sort of standing back objectively, because the hard thing with suicide is to be objective about it, because it's extremely emotionally charged. But if I'm standing back and being objective, I'm saying murder is not one of the, the tr fruit that would fall out of the tree of the spirit. So if I'm judging them by their fruit, my guess would probably be that they're not saved. However, he does bring up a good, a good, a good example, which, by the way, I agree with him. Saul did kill himself, even though you do have the Amalekite in the book of Second Samuel who comes to David and says he killed Saul. I don't believe the guy. But but you know, Saul hold, hold. Saul was also dying, so there there was that. Like he wasn't killing himself because he was depressed. He was literally dying, and he didn't want to suffer the pain. He didn't he didn't want the Philistines to get a hold of him. Yeah. So he killed himself. Oh, right. Um, That's right. They lost yeah. the battle. He didn't want to be ca yeah. captured. So he yeah. falls on his sword. But th there's a whole debate about that. I agree with his position that Saul did kill himself, not what the Amalekite tells David. Totally different story, though. But when we come to what Saul says, because Saul does go to the witch at Endor. She brings Samuel back, surprisingly, because she had no idea it was going to work. But she brings, the, she brings Samuel back, and Samuel does say to him, you're going to lose, and you're going to be with me and your sons. You need to understand, 
I think what he did is he read into that statement the same way that people read into other statements in the Old Testament. They read sort of a, a our modern idea of what that would mean. Samuel is not trying to tell him, hey, man, you're coming home to heaven. No, he's saying you're going to the grave just like your children did, just like I'm in the grave now. He is, he's declaring a judgment on Saul. He's not He's not trying to give him hope that, hey, you're going to heaven. Yeah, um, I think he's, so I think he, he's definitely... I, I think you're... I think so, it's just a misuse of the text. Go ahead. In this context, I, I probably disagree with you about, because I know you're probably thinking about David and, 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 the, and I the baby. I probably disagree with you about that. But in this in this context, it's definitely saying you're going to go there in a negative sense. Like he's, he's giving That's a negative judgment. And he's saying, here's a negative thing. You are going to go with your sons. I mean, you're going to die and be dead like them. So I, I think that's different from from David, who is comforted by the fact that he would be with his son later. But that's a separate issue. Um, but yeah, in this case, I think you're right. I think he definitely is a negative thing. However, that being said, I do think Blake is is mostly right here. The the sin of suicide doesn't itself send you to hell. But um, and and if if that's happened in your family, I don't want you to think that whoever did that is necessarily an L. Um, but it is really sad, and if if they're saved, it was a it was a massive rebellion against God, and I certainly wouldn't want to stand before God on Judgment Day um, after killing myself, knowing that knowing that I my last act on earth was to murder one of His children. I would be that that would be shameful. But it is possible that someone is genuinely saved and does that. It's just it's hard. It it's unlikely. It's unlikely right, that a right. true Christian and, would do that. And again, if you have someone who's committed suicide, I'm sure this question has gone through your mind if you're Christian or coming from a Christian worldview. So that's why I say it's hard to be objective on this one. Yeah. It's so emotionally charged that when you have the idea that there are people who have actually gone through this, and this is a very real question, thank God I haven't had to, to think through that on the level of it's happened in my family or something. But I can understand it's really difficult. But what, I'm, what I want to say is that I really feel for you if that's you. But I cannot let the emotionally charged situation determine what the text teaches on a particular issue. So as, as emotionally charged as it can be, I want, I want whatever scripture teaches on this one, which, like I said, I, don't, I, I can't be dogmatic one way or the other. It's not a good sign, but I, I don't think – I think he's right that because I, I believe in Roman Catholicism that would be a mortal sin. You just died outside a state of grace. You're going to hell. I don't think – I could not go there and say that that means you're going to hell. I wouldn't know for sure. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have, and we are completely out of time. Can't even promote anything. Uh, we'll see you next time right here on Point of View. White Mountain Munchies, the perfect snack food packed with plenty of vitamins and nutrients to satisfy your hunger – boost your immune system, and contribute to better overall health and wellness. Available in four fantastic flavors of trail mix, Maggie's Maple Madness, Hannah's Heavenly Harvest, Grayson's Getaway Goodies, and Jacoby's Jolly Jumble. Get yours now at whitemountainmunchies.com.